I was in the investment management industry and commuting two hours a day, going to a job I hated, overweight, unhappy, kind of middle class plight, I guess. Logan was like, well, why don't we move into a smaller apartment? We can save money, pay off some debt. And I was like, no way, I don't want to give up my stuff. But of course, kind of got on board. We have, you know, our kind of basic clothes. So this uh, opens to our closet. And then we have Logan's, my clothes. Right now I have like two dresses and then like a black skirt and then a bunch of different tank tops. And then for winter, I have this awesome, it's like a, a long sleeve wool shirt that's- if, if you look at the general proportion <gasps> of, of clothes, I actually take up more than my share of the closet. After we started downsizing, I found this thing called the 100 Thing Challenge. The idea being like narrow down your personal items to under 100 things. I love my camera. Here are Logan's books. <laughs> um, mine are up in the loft by my bedside. I don't have many books. I have probably 10 books. I used to have hundreds. I have a standing workstation. So like I stand here and I, I type. I'm a writer and photographer. I was in the investment management industry and I changed to a different career. I'm just kind of, I wanted to be happier and healthier. But we also have our fold-out desk. This is just an Ikea uh, fold-out desk. This is the one that I use, we use for eating a lot of times too. So if I get tired of standing, I'll just sit and work here, but I, you know, go to coffee shops and stuff like that too, to write. So this just comes off the top. So it is like a cutting board runs off of uh, denatured alcohol and these are cartridges that are stuffed with wool. These basically kind of act like a Zippo lighter. They bind the denatured alcohol just to demonstrate. And denatured alcohol you can find in any hardware store. It's marine stove fuel and it's also like paint thinner type thing. Put it down and then put the flame up there. Very clean to burn so it's actually even better than propane as far as air quality. And the oven works basically in exactly the same way. And it has just this door that opens just like that. And it's just the same cartridge underneath. Of course, it has all the boating accoutrements of, you know, locking so that it doesn't open up. There's gimbals for the top and everything, but we don't rock too much at sea here. We're living in about a 1,200 square foot apartment, two bedroom apartment. We just closed off one of the bedrooms in the two bedroom and that way it was, it was Tammy's way of trying it on for size. Can we really do this? Why don't we try it on and see if we can do it before jumping into another year mm -hmm. lease in a place that might be too small. And it totally works. <laughs> I thought we could downsize to a one bedroom apartment, but Tammy really picked up uh, snowballed the idea. We've got a great big filter system. It's, it's the second one we've tried. Um, and then it just attaches directly to the opening for the sink outside. And then we just plug directly into a garden hose faucet, a spigot in the yard. We pay rent to be on this property, so that's 500 a month. The rent includes utilities and internet. The yard that we're staying in had a single wide mobile home here before so that it had the hookups for all that stuff so it was easy to plug in at a close range but this is basically the attachment and this is a 30 amp breaker but we've never actually used more than seven amps even with everything turned on this is just a normal air conditioner for bedrooms but our house just happens to be the size of a normal bedroom so <laughs> it works pretty well and, and how much did it cost it was about $35,000 after all everything, the accessories like, and everything and yeah. included. And uh, slightly more than half of that was labor. You could say this is really expensive in terms of square footage, but it's less than a car would cost and we could pay for it in cash. And then if we moved, we could take it with us. Right. As well, so, so we could rent land, or even my family has a cattle ranch up north. Mm -hmm. 
when we were living on my family's property, it was more work share. So I help out feeding cows and helping out fixing fence or doing something a few hours a day. And that was our rent. So it offered a lot of flexibility, mm -hmm. I guess, is where we went with on keeping it on wheels. You've moved. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's been kind of not <laughs> ideal circumstances. My dad had a massive stroke in January 2012, and I spent the first basically six months of 2012 traveling for back and forth to help take care of him. And then he passed away in June, and... Prior to that, we Logan's job was transferred to Boston, and so we knew he would be out of a job in Portland. And we were like, we've got to move back home to Northern California because this is too far from family. I wanted to be close to my mom's. It's been a lot of transition in a year, and I'm glad to be here. I don't want to move anytime soon. We have our litter box too, yep. right here. Unfortunately, Christy still won't go outside, which is annoying, <laughs> but what do you do? She'll climb this, and then her little kitty paws, she'll rest on here and fling herself into the loft. It's really awesome. She's a ninja. <laughs> I noticed you have a pantry. <laughs> Yeah, we hang up some of our fruits and veggies too. So. You have a refrigerator, right? No, we yeah. actually don't. We've been living without a refrigerator for about two and a half years now, but that was mainly when we were in Portland. We only had you know, hot days of about a couple weeks a year, so we could have a cooler chest and be fine. Although, um, moving to California, where it's supposed to be 106 at the end of this week, um, we are, I think, going to invest in a, a little plug-in cooler so that we don't need to be running to the you know store for ice all the time. Plus we've got all our kind of grains up. Because really it's just half and half in beer that we consume that's refrigerated. When we cook meat, we tend to eat it all. We don't have much leftovers. And it's with everything as well. Actually in the wintertime, it's really easy that we keep, just keep our food outside the window. We don't have too many critters out here. So we could just put our half and half like outside of the window, like we put our soap, you know, and then just close the window and just keep it as a outside cooling. That's one thing we've learned with the tiny house as well is that you know with the heating and cooling we also just try and be a little more in tune with the seasons it's not even seeing the seasons a lot of places there's not that many windows and here there's 10 windows in the house of 120 square feet so really it, it's an amazing amount of space everywhere where your line of sight is every where you look someplace there's you're actually seeing outside so it makes the whole home feel bigger overall even the shelves are lifted up so that um, nothing blocks your view of the windows and even our door uh, for the bathroom, uh, we share it with the closet. So we have privacy, of course, when we're in the bathroom, but then, and we don't care if the closet's open when we're using the bathroom, and then we just leave the closet closed and then just have this open, and then we can also just see outside. It's a composting toilet. We call it a dry toilet too. We use just peat moss, and then we mix in some sawdust, and then the mixture of those two we use as a covering for the solid waste. And then over the period of about a year, the bacteria break down that whole thing to produce soil. Basically, this is called a separate. It's a Swedish model that basically separates the liquid waste in the front and then the solid waste in the back. And we just use about three scoops to cover up a solid waste in the back. And also the toilet paper as well, just it's a single ply, so it breaks down very easily. The reason we have stainless steel here is we want to do a sit-down shower, but we realize if it takes more than about three steps, you're not going to do it that frequently. <laughs> we actually have this line in so we can have a shower curtain for this whole thing. This actually pops up on the bottom to reveal a shower basin. The idea was great on paper, but actually putting it into reality, it takes about six steps to do, and it's just too many to actually get involved. So we're probably going to install an outdoor shower here, and we just use the shower at the gym. So. We'll see how it, how it works out. These have been great on the ladder. Um, a lot of DIY tiny housers build their ladder and they build it flush. And then they have nothing to hold on to and they, they come up. It's something we've learned that people have. We've got a little kitty bed here as well. The, uh, called the uh, sleepy pod. So it actually turns into a cat carrier as well as, as the bed. 
and um, over here the the loft it's about four feet um, to the top of the ceiling and it's um, about a perfect space to uh, sit up in the morning it uh, has kind of a camping feel to it but without being uncomfortable <laughs> yeah this is actually just Tim, Timmy's library oh. over here and I have even more books up here that I'm that I'm reading and getting through wonderful too to sit up here to look out yeah. out of the skylight and feel like you're you're a little bit above things our friend D. Williams likes to say it makes the world feel like a, a little more understandable. It makes your problems feel a little further away. It's nice and quiet and peaceful. It's a little bit of your own space. It's, it feels like it's it's a little bit separate space that way. Not that we need too much. We hang out with each other all the time anyway. But it is nice to have that. If I need space, I just go outside, and that that works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always funny to me because people are like, well, how do you have space? And it's like, well, I really like being, hanging out with Logan, you know. But yeah, it's been good for us as a couple because, you know, if, if there are problems, you have to talk about them. Like, you can't be like, fine, I'm going to the room and slamming the door because you can't. So... There are exactly two doors in the house and they both lead outside. Yeah. Tiny houses let us fit into a niche in most communities, a fitting in a backyard or property like this one that used to have a trailer on the property that we wouldn't normally be able to live in this neighborhood otherwise. You know, we'd have to live in an apartment in a different part of town. We have something that uh, hooks on to the arm of the tongue of the trailer, uh, and it's called an electric dolly. And basically, it replaces the power supply of a truck. It's this uh, contraption that uh, has a half horsepower electric motor on it and uh, it ho hooks up this uh, comes off and it attaches to the tongue of the trailer so theoretically you could spin the house on a 180 degree turn you know really we could turn it for a season too so in the winter time if it came out that it was better in a different part of the yard we could move it that way as well we are legal when it comes to a lot of the building codes because we're on wheels we actually are under department of transportation and not a part of the city building codes it really comes down to most cities maintenance codes and how they want to enforce those and most tiny houses are not specifically illegal they're not uh, written into the code that this type of thing is illegal and it's not specifically written that it is legal so it falls into an illegal loophole that really is up to the discretion of the person that's coming by to look at, at the structure overall. Some communities call these RVs and other communities would call this more of an accessory dwelling unit that as long as certain precautions are made where we have you know a smoke detector that we have a fire extinguisher that we have entrance and exit that's at least 36 inches wide so that emergency personnel could be able to come in there's reasons why there are zoning codes in cities and we want to respect a lot of those reasons we thought while we're at this whole tiny house thing why don't we try taking other conventions well, let's try tossing them out the window and see if they still apply to us it's been about five years we've been car free, but actually I'd say car light because we do rent cars yeah. and we do car shares and that way we feel like we're sharing resources instead of just having another copy, you know, that a whole postage stamp thing where you have a lawnmower, home gym, home theater system, and then the next house is the same thing instead of trying to share these things mm -hmm. that you only use occasionally. One of my favorite quotes from Malin, my father-in-law that passed away was that um, if you think you own something, try not paying taxes on something for a few years and see how long you own it. If you think you own your home or your land or, you know, even cars or something if you're, you're paying payments on them. So many Americans are in debt and you think you own something, you think you have stuff in your life and you think it is permanent as security, but it really isn't. And it's not something you can hang your hat on, really. Uh, everything's changing. I threw my back out last weekend. Uh, I've been sleeping on the the uh, bench and it actually pulls out even more into like a single bed which is handy and we did that on purpose in case one of us was injured and we couldn't go up or if we wanted to have company yeah. come so stay the night um, and then it folds out basically slightly larger so it's about the width of a double bed in the middle but length of about a width of a single bed at the top and then we've got these little wings that fold out and that way it can hold the weight of the person 
on, on the bed. I've been in a lot of pain and I'm on the mend, but you know, if you've got a bad back, like climbing the loft ladder, eh, not so great. Nothing's certain. I mean, that's the biggest lesson I've learned from the last year and a half is that nothing is certain. I think it's important to structure your life in a way to focus on your priorities. And for us, that's our loved ones and, you know, having enough money to pay our bills and do fun things, but not worrying about all the excess that I worried about seven years ago, like needing the two cars and a 3,000 square foot house. Like that's just, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter in the long run. We'd love to be here forever, but I also know that life can change in an instant. So it's like, well, you know, if we ended up having to move to an apartment for whatever reason, I mean, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the point with this lifestyle to give yourself that flexibility. When my dad was so ill last year, I could help take care of him. You know, I was there when he died and it's like, it sucks, but it's also a gift. I mean, how many people get to take care of their parents when in, when they're in that state or they want to, but they can't because they have to pay for a $4,000 mortgage? Like, uh, Freedom. It, yeah. yeah. Even though the past year has been a lot of upheaval with moving the house, like it's harder than you think to move the tiny house and stressful and all that. Um, but I'm really grateful for that because we've had that flexibility to really be there for family. His death was part of the reason we decided to move and his illness back home, just to be closer to family and like really focus on that stuff because that's what matters, you know? Like you only get one shot.